Good evening and welcome to Byline, a brand new public affairs show here at Amherst Media and it's sponsored by the League of Women Voters. You'll see this program every Friday evening at 8 o'clock beginning on January 4th and you'll see uh, the same show rebroadcast on Monday evening following that uh, 30 minutes before the council uh, actually meets and uh, they won't meet every week but they'll meet frequently and this particular show will be broadcast then on Friday, January 4th, and again on Monday, January 7th. And in between, you can see it on Amherst Media's YouTube channel and probably on other social media venues as time uh, goes by and people start picking up uh, on the availability of this, uh, of this broadcast. And uh, the purpose of this show is simply to provide an opportunity for us to get to know much better the legislators who represent us both here in town on the newly elected and sworn in and organized town council and also our newly elected state representative Mindy Dom and our newly elected state senator Joe Comerford. And we hope to in the first uh, let's say mm, three months or so it's really going to focus a lot on trying to get to know uh, these individuals better because as in the case of the town council we all had to had the opportunity to vote for three at-large councillors so we probably know a lot more about each of them than we do uh, district councillors outside of the district in which we live because we each got to vote for two district councillors we probably did a pretty good job figuring out who they were but we may not know much about the district councillors in the other districts and after all, they all have an equal vote, and their decisions and their work will affect each and every one of us, whether they rec represent us directly uh, or indirectly as uh, they serve on the council from a district. And similarly with uh, Joe and Mindy, we want to get to know them better and what's going on in Beacon Hill. So this public affairs show will uh, broadcast uh, every Friday night and the following Monday night with the same uh, broadcast. and. Um, uh, when the town council is in session, uh, Amherst TV will cut right to their meeting upon the completion of our show. Not that our show will take precedence over the meeting, but it just so happens our 30-minute show will precede the town council meeting. And so with that backdrop, we get to welcome our first guest, Lynn Griesmer. And Lynn is uh, elected uh, at a district council level. and. But she also has the distinction of having been elected the first president of the Amherst Town Council, which is a significant honor and a significant responsibility because everything the council does in this first three-year term is going to set precedent and people are going to look to those uh, actual rules and decisions, but also the informal uh, things that go on. Uh, and it will really help set the tone, the direction, and create the precedence for how uh, counselors are going to think of themselves, how they're going to work together, and how the community is going to interact with them, and then how the community is going to view the council. It's a very important three-year period, and your job is an extraordinarily important one. And it's great that you're retired and can work at this job about 80 hours a week, because that's probably what you're going to need. Is that about right, Lynn? Oh, I'm trying to keep it to 20. <laughs> trying to keep it to 20. Okay, well, good luck with that. Thank you. I know you're a very uh, responsibility-oriented person, so you'll do whatever it takes, however many hours it takes, because uh, that's in your nature. And speaking of that, let's begin with a little bit of background. So um, I know, and maybe other people in town know, that uh, you worked at the Donahue Institute at the University of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And you were also um, at the senior level in the UMass President's Office mm -hmm. uh, doing some work on economic development. But your real sort of publicly known role in the university is with the Donahue Institute. Right. And you were a program officer there and researcher. And then you became the director somewhere along the way. Right. And when you took over, it had about a budget of about $2 million. Somewhere two to three. Two yes. to three. And you work with communities and state mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. 
uh, doing research and programming and training and helping them do a better job at what they do. But the other distinguishing characteristic was that your budget when you retired was now at $20 million. Right. So I'm going to say tenfold increase. Yes. That's a pretty remarkable mm -hmm. accomplishment, especially when you think about the work that you guys were doing because you were trying to help our democracy run better. Mm -hmm. What did you get from that whole experience that you're bringing to the table at the town council? Uh, one of the things that actually goes even beyond uh, early my early years uh, in my professional life, which spans almost 50 years, is I really just love to do startups and organizing how people proceed with, if you will, big efforts. And this is a big effort. Uh, and so what I bring is that experience of how to look at something, how to listen to different people, and how to then put a structure that allows this council, in this case, to be able to make decisions and move forward in the interest of the town. Excellent. So um, team building, yep. organization, structure. Mm -hmm. um, what other skills from other life experience are you bringing to the table? Well, I think the other piece, another piece, for example, is I've had a long involvement with the Amherst Survival Center. Mm -hmm. And what that has allowed me to do is truly understand a lot more about the region, but specifically Amherst, and understand that Amherst is not uh, made up of only people who are, um, if you will, uh, have lots of resources. In fact, Amherst is one of 50 communities in Massachusetts that have are at the lower poverty level. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of need in Amherst and a lot of voices that are not heard in Amherst. Hidden poverty in Amherst. Hidden poverty. Uh, and a lot of voices that are not heard. And so I think one of the things that uh, not only do we need to be listening to those people who have always been vocal in Amherst, um, but we need to be figuring out how to reach to the many, many other people who don't always feel they have a voice, and yet they're affected by our decisions and by how the town will move forward. Excellent. Now, we learn forever, right? We certainly We're do. We're always learning. So in this job, what new skills and growth do you hope for yourself will evolve over time as a result of you serving on the council mm -hmm. and now serving as president of the council? I think the interesting thing for me in this is, you know, as you mentioned, I've spent a fair amount of my time uh, with the University of Massachusetts as executive director of the UMass Donahue Institute, but then also as associate vice president for economic development. But when you're in the council, you're actually there making decisions that will affect the economic future of, of, of uh, Amherst, and that's different than the pl roles I've played in the past, where I've been more working with other people who were making those decisions. And now it's really, how do we get to those decisions? How do we weigh those decisions? And politically, how do we sell those ideas? Excellent, and so let's, let's focus now on your role as president. Mm -hmm. So what's your philosophy about leadership in this situation that you're in? If you look at state legislatures and mm -hmm. city and town councils, you see all different models of, of leadership. Some are uh, very directive, some are uh, encouraging and creating some direction, but not directive. Some are uh, facilitators and consensus builders. What's your job as president of the council and what's your philosophy of how to lead in the situation in which you find yourself as president? Uh, I think I fall in the latter two, more of a facilitator, uh, more of a um, trying to find consensus and build on that uh, as we start tackling in these next several months uh, some of the bigger issues uh, that the town is facing. Uh, what you'll see is that I'll be listening uh, to uh, the various council members and what they are saying and what they feel. And then I'll be trying to wave or weave my way through that with something that I think hits 
the major issues that most of them are interested in. Uh, you know, we have some things coming up on our agenda in the next month or so, uh, where I've already been in that role, where actually in this case, trying to listen to both what has the town already done, what are the experts on our town staff know, and what do people in the community who are experts in various areas also know, and then how do you mesh that together in a way that forms the kind of structure that will allow Amherst to embrace and move forward. What do you look for from the other counselors in terms of how they work together and what role can you as president of the council and uh, your vice president in your absence, mm -hmm. um, what can you do to contribute to the dynamic that you think is the ideal dynamic for mm -hmm. how the council should be working together? Well, first of all, it's, it's a terrific body. There are just on that council, uh, Comp in addition to myself, 12 extremely talented and very, very interested people. Uh, I, prior to us being sworn in, and if apps actually during a lot of the campaigning as well, I met with, various, with every one of the counselors. Uh, I tested out what their interests are. I have pages and pages of my notes from those times and looking for opportunities for where each of the counselors can themselves take a leadership role on an issue or on a couple different issues. And I think we'll see that happening. Uh, we're already seeing it. We see people uh, taking advantage of various meetings around town, of committees and so forth, and council people will show up because they're in the process of being educated. And so in addition to the education, it's also then helping each counselor find their place where they can provide leadership, they can be the expert person for the council, and maybe with another counselor as well. So I'm hoping that's the way the council moves forward, and I think we have the right body to do that. So with. you see all of the counselors actually as elected leaders. Absolutely. And your job is to help them be the leaders they were elected to be right. by helping them by, by, by helping bring to the table their specialties mm -hmm. and, their, and their skill sets and their capacity. And their interests. And their interests. Mm -hmm. uh, are you also a referee? Oh, yes. <laughs> Talk about that. Well, I think referees <laughs> often have to, uh, you know, again, do a lot of listening and find the middle ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there's, we've already had situations um, in our council meetings where it was apparent that we could not come to a consensus in a way that uh, we could move a certain committee forward as a standing committee. And so we're taking it back off the table. We'll discuss it at a future retreat. And at that point, we may or may not go forward with that committee. Uh, but it's referring between people, for example, say, we don't have any need for that committee, and other people who not only say, I want that committee, but I want to be on that committee. So that style that you're describing sounds like you hope it's ready for prime time. Right. You get it on the agenda, mm -hmm. you go to the meeting, mm -hmm. you find out that it isn't quite ready for prime time, and there's no harm and no embarrassment and should not be taken so right. to set it aside temporarily, mm -hmm. go back and do some more work, mm -hmm. and then bring it back to the table. Right. So you don't have to get it exactly right the first time, mm -hmm. but by the time you finally vote and make the decision that everybody lives with, you hope that it will be the right, the right course. Right. And that's uh, and the kind of know, dynamic you want to try to set up. Right. And of course, because we are a public body, we, because, because we are the legislative body, we have to do everything in open meeting. Right. And, you know, it's, <laughs> as you know from your many, many years in politics, if you don't like watching process, then this is not the place for you to be. be so and if you're be, not patient enough to yes. listen to everybody until they've had their say, right. but also if you're not willing to say, I'm not going to repeat it, but I agree with what Sally just exactly. said. <laughs> exactly. So that you can get all the ideas on the table, right. think them through, and make a decision. Mm -hmm. Right. That's great. You've only had one controversial, really controversial, <laughs> 
vote so far on the council, and that was the vice president. Yes. Have I got that right? Yes. The others were pretty routine, and most of them were unanimous or close to unanimous, and so pretty. I think on the issue of whether we would move from 7 o'clock to 6.30, we had a 9 to 4 vote. A 9 to 4 that vote, was okay. about the only <laughs> one where there might have been more of a, a okay. sense of a split. Okay. Sometimes the easiest things end up being the hardest things, right. don't they? Right. Uh, but in the case of the um, uh, of the vote on the uh, on uh, vice president, um, you uh, you voted to break the tie. Mm -hmm. So this opens up another area, which is, you know, in some legislative bodies, um, the presiding officer doesn't vote except to break a tie. In others, they can vote any time they want, mm -hmm. but they usually only vote to break the tie. Mm -hmm. And in others, uh, like the Massachusetts House of Representatives, the first light that goes red or green is the Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. So um, there are different styles and different modes. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see, as president of the council, mm -hmm. and understanding that it may set a tradition and a pattern going forward, mm -hmm. what's your view about when the president in the Amherst Town Council votes or doesn't? Mm -hmm. Well, the charter is very clear. The okay. president can vote at any point and on all votes. So we don't, I don't have the prescription, if you will, of only breaking, uh, voting to break a tie. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and in fact, as we now have recorded votes for all of our votes, and part of the attachments to the minutes will be actually each of the votes and who voted which way. Mm -hmm. You will generally see that I will vote. Mm -hmm. However, on that particular instance, I was hoping that the council, the rest of the counselors could come to their decision. Seeing that they were not going to, uh, I cast my vote for the person I felt was most suitable for the job at the time. And the decision to vote most of the time mm -hmm. is because I represent my district. They need to know where I stand. And while we all represent either a district or we're townwide, we're all part of Amherst. And Amherst needs to know where we stand on issues. So I have no very problem good. with recorded votes. Great. Um, it's very transparent. It's consistent mm -hmm. with the uh, direction of the charter and the direction of the community when they voted for the charter. So right. kudos to you, Thank you. Uh, that you see it that way. Now. Um, Let's, uh, let's go to a structural question here. Mm -hmm. You've got to name some committees. There are four or five standing committees. We've actually approved the uh, three standing committees. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are, in fact, finance, uh, which is a huge responsibility, uh, as are the other two. Uh, the second one is really around, um, it, and it's not dictated in the charter the way finance is, but it's really around um, communication, outreach, and appointments. And I would see that as the committee that really embraces community engagement, uh, works with counselors on how we do our district meetings, works with the town on how we do our town-wide forums, uh, making sure that we have the kinds of materials and the kind of support we need. Maybe uh, we all want to talk about it, the same thing at some point during our required district meetings, although many people, counselors, are already planning more than two a year. Um, and then the issue of appointments are issues because many of the appointments are now made by the town um, manager as the executive branch, if you will, either appointments of department heads or appointments of committees. And so vetting those appointments and so forth uh, will be important for that committee. And then the final committee is really around governance, organization, and legislation. And while we have an ad hoc um, rules of procedure committee already functioning, they've met once, they're meeting again on the 15th of January. Um, and we've had this terrific work that's been done by Bob Ritchie and two other people on that committee on the bylaws. We still have more work to do on the bylaws. We still need to pass the bylaws. And so you've got several other committees like that that either will have town councilors on them or there'll be committees that the council creates and then either they will have councilors or they will be what are called multiple member bodies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Excellent. And um, 
So much of the work in the next, well, at least three to six months, and really a fair amount of the first year to two, is really around structure and organization and all of that, putting those pieces into place. Um, actually, I don't think that's true. Okay. Um, I think that what we've done is spend the month of December in our three meetings, uh, getting the minimal structure we need and what people will start seeing on the 7th and our subsequent meetings, even though we're only required to do one a month, we are scheduling two a month, uh, is you'll see us starting to actually talk about the issues. And sometimes those issues will need to be referred to committees, standing committees. Sometimes they'll need to be taken back for additional information. And sometimes you'll see us having to vote. So for example, at this next uh, meeting on the 7th, the, the recommendations or the options that we might look at for the Station Road Bridge will be coming up. And that's not organizational, that's doing the business of the town. So what do you think, that's really encouraging to hear that you're going to get down to issues mm -hmm. rather quickly. So what percentage of the time, let's say in the first year, do you think will be around organization and structure and function? Mm -hmm and training and education so that people really understand the role and, and use it to the greatest, uh, to the best extent possible, et cetera, et cetera. How, how much time, what percentage of your time do you think the council is going to dedicate to that? 20%. That's fantastic. So that means there's going to be a lot of issues that can come forward mm -hmm. and you guys can start working on. Uh, either de creating po uh, policy directions mm -hmm. or creating uh, structural mechanisms to pursue them, which mm -hmm. might be some ad hoc committees and uh, study groups and task forces and things of that nature. Well, that's fantastic. What else is going to be on the agenda on January 7th? Well, we're working very hard uh, to bring forward a proposal to create a committee that, uh, for now at least, the working title is um, Energy and Climate Resilience. So it's under the broad umbrella, if you will, of sustainability. Uh, Amherst has, as many people know, been going through lots of transitions, going all the way back to John Musanti's untimely death and transitions in town leadership and then the transition in the actual form of government. Uh, while we have done a lot in the area of sustainability, we're actually now behind many other towns. Mm. And so it's going to be very important for uh, the council to look at this issue, decide how to move forward, uh, form the appropriate kind of structure to help do that and uh, engage lots of citizen input into that. Uh, it's an issue that is very, very important to several of us on the council. Uh, some people are more knowledgeable of the, about the area that are on the council mm -hmm. than others, but I think you'll see uh, at least a very uh, good discussion on Monday the 7th, if not uh, the adoption of a uh, charge for a committee um, and the creation of a committee. Uh, but if we don't do it by Monday, it'll be by the 28th of, Janu of January. When will your standing committee appointments be finalized? The, there is a requirement that the, uh, oh, the standing committee appointments? Standing committee okay. appointments. Those I'm hoping to finalize on Monday. On Monday the 7th. The 7th, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. So those of you who are watching uh, on Friday evening, the 4th, get ready. A lot of big announcements and big news because right. that's going to be a very important set of, uh, of decisions that you have uh, the unique responsibility to make and you can do it in any way you choose. You can mm -hmm. consult with people. But it sounds like you've done a pretty exhaustive job of collecting people's knowledge, interests, skills, desires, uh, things they would like to contribute, and so you've got a pretty big knowledge base that even, you can use. Even with that knowledge base, I went out with a individual uh, email uh, to have people make their first, second, and third choice for standing committees and also for the other committees where we have town council representation. Given and there are 13 members, given there's 13 how many members, slots do you have to fill in, in the uh, all the standing committees? Each, co each standing committee has five. So uh, that means a few people are going to get two appointments. That's right. But not everyone. No, but they Stand might be by. on a different one. They might be on an ad hoc committee or, or something else. Joint that will, capital planning sure. or yeah. uh, the budget uh, 
commit the budget review. There's any number of so everybody's going to have work to do. Oh yes, no question about it, including me. Okay, <laughs> we probably, we have I think maybe a minute or two. Okay, so I just want to ask you, marijuana. Yep. Town meeting, select board, mm -hmm. a bunch of decisions got made, a direction mm -hmm. got set. Mm -hmm. Where are we on marijuana here in Amherst, mm -hmm. and what do you think might be happening coming down the road? Well, there's been uh, three different vendors have been selected uh, for Amherst at this point. There's the option of going back out for additional applications should um, the council decide to do that. And there is a precedent been set by the review process in the past. I think the other piece that's going to be very important is to look at the impact of it on our town. And in that process, see if whether or not we need to do some tightening. Uh, for instance, um, town count, the um, select board chose not to put in place a licensing procedure. Uh, but we may at some point say, we feel we need to have a licensing procedure. Uh, and again, all of this is being done in the big umbrella of the statewide board. Are there any projections on the revenue side uh, if uh, Amherst builds out the vision that's already been put on the table for marijuana in town? I, am, I have not seen those projections, so I will not speak to that. Stay tuned. It's going to become a big issue yes. in terms of what to do with that money, uh, assuming that the money starts flowing. Right. So thank you, Lynn, for joining us, and um, I really appreciate hearing some of your thinking behind the work that you're doing and how you're going to work with your colleagues to shape a council in which uh, each member of the council gets to fairly represent their own constituency, whether they were elected at the district level or town-wide, mm -hmm. and that they're each going to be able to play a meaningful role in the work of the council. Um, a lot of work ahead. and. Uh, um, want to congratulate you again on your election and wish you great success uh, for all of our sakes. And thank you, Stan, for bringing your many years of political and public service to this show. Oh, thank you very much. And to the community. Happy to do it. And thank you all very much for joining us. And uh, remember, uh, this will be broadcast twice on Friday evening at 8 p.m. and again on Monday at 6 p.m. And that will be the pattern every week. Uh, we will have a show. And we want to thank the um, uh, Amherst League of Women Voters, Amherst Media, our producer Faith Gregory, and uh, Jim, who's behind the camera, and another person who's behind another camera. I regret I don't know your name, but thank you very much for your work. So thank you all for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again next week.